This is Secrets to Win Big, your roadmap to sustained growth. Brought to you by Arjun Sen, founder and CEO of Zen Mango, top brand growth driver and a former Fortune 500 executive who has been called one of the most marketing intelligent minds in the business. Find him at zenmango.com. And now, here's your host, Arjun Sen. Welcome to Secrets to Win Big with Arjun Sen. Today, I have the honor and pleasure to have a conversation with Vitti Bindra. Vitti Bindra has over 25 years of global experience in developing and executing business strategies for various technology products and service companies. He had a successful tech startup and currently a global business executive for Microsoft Alliance at Kindrel that covers strategic markets in 42 countries and NZ regions and is responsible for the rapid growth. I also have been fortunate to watch Vitti in action as he led the team in Houston, Texas for one of the best conferences I've ever attended, a Pan-IIT. Pan-IIT is an uh, alumni organization of IIT, Indian Institute of Technology graduates from India. And I want to go into details about the planning of that event and how that event was made so successful. Viti, it's truly a pleasure to have a conversation with you and welcome to Secrets to Win Big. Uh, thank you, Arjun. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. So Viti, first of all, big milestones all through your life. I want to look at your path has gone from Delhi to New Zealand to all over the world, an incredible experience. If you look at from IIT Delhi to go get now to where you are in that evolution, what are a few big milestones in the journey? And then I want to go into each one, what you learned, what the impact was. Great. No, uh, thank you, Arjun. Uh, I think uh, it's a very straightforward question, but uh, may have a, a complex answer. Uh, so, so, so let me take one step back. So I come from a, a middle-class family. My father was a government officer and my mother was a school teacher, school principal. And I was privileged to go to IIT Delhi. So I, uh, as I completed my master's in 93 and then uh, developed a strong interest in technology and innovation during my IIT days. Uh, way back 93, I cleared my engineering services in India and joined Air Force Authority of India. 95, I I, I got a scholarship from CBS scholarship from uh, Indian government to go to UK to to work on some technology transfer assignments. Uh, from there, the, the the life started, and I, I joined World Bank uh, consulting work in New Zealand. Did my MBA, uh, joined a multinational company in Australia for two years, expand the operations, moved to the US after my marriage in two thousand and four. Um, worked for uh, uh, some of the big technology companies in the U.S., uh, launched my tech startup in Houston and uh, serving as the appointed CEO and overseeing uh, three verticals, technology, manufacturing, and infrastructure. Then again, uh, life moved on, had a successful exit in 2016. And then I joined uh, uh, some of the master data management company in the U.S., looking after the global Alliances work, and finally I'm in Kindrel now. Is uh, I joined them in 22, and I'm a, as you said I'm a global business executive responsible for expanding the Microsoft Kindrel relationship in markets like uh, MIA, uh, Asia Pacific, Europe, Latin, and of course Australia and New Zealand. So 93 to 2020, 2022, I've lived in I should say five different countries and work with different people. It has been a challenging journey and I'm, I have enjoyed every day of that journey. So what was the biggest learning working professionally in five different countries? You know, uh, I firmly believe uh, when you leave India after doing your graduation, you are, uh, you are still into the development phase. You have got the required education, you have got the required knowledge. Uh, but to to use that knowledge in different environment, you have to adapt to their local conditions. 
So the biggest learning for me was adaptability. How you will adapt working with the Britishers, how you will adapt working with, uh, with, with, with the Australians. And I, 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 I remember I read a book long time ago, uh, Who Moved My Cheese by mm. Dr. Spencer Johnson. And the message for the book was that life won't always give you what you want and when you want it. So biggest learning was if you can change with the environments, you go with the flow, you will make it. So I want to go a little deeper there. Give me one example, either in UK or in Australia or New Zealand, an adjustment you made that shows me that it's not as easy as you tell me. It takes a lot of work to make that adjustment that resulted in better connections. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, looking back to my career, what happened there, I'll give you a perfect example. I used to do the infrastructure projects funded by World Bank and Asian Development Bank. And we were not using the, the IT technology in those projects. <laughs> and I was curious to see the writing on the wall that all the project management, all the contract management will be done by using IT tools, IT technologies, the days to come. So I went and took some classes at, at a senior role there. I took some classes in Australia and New Zealand, learned about the Microsoft technology, how the Microsoft uh, things work, how I can manage the project virtually from my desktop, what software I have to implement in different uh, sites, what I have to do. And you know one thing, once I did that, I was in a position to talk to my CIO and make a, a, a very uh, sensible conversation. And, and when he asked me, what is my background? I said, I'm not from IT world, but I understand IT. So that was a big change for me, how I moved from the pure infrastructure OEM to the cloud native IT technology solutions. Brilliant. So I want to go to the area I have been dying to get to is the Pan-IT conference. And I want to put this whole thing yeah. in perspective to show and explain, paint the picture to the listeners and viewers how big it was in my mind. The conference, yeah. so, 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 let me put that in perspective. A year sure. before, I was the vice president and or you can call president-elect and the conference will be in Houston. The team has never done a Pan-IT conference in Houston and they were talking about a launching event and I flew from Denver to Houston and I was literally expecting three people casually meeting one showing up late at a Starbucks and saying, yeah, we got it. <laughs> Instead, we met at a university in a conference, in a auditorium. And they were, and I forget the number, pardon me for that, eight, nine or 10 different area heads with their team. Each yeah. presented their plan. Like I, at the end, I still remember we took a picture of all of us and it was more than the conference. You know, to me, what I learned was that day that this is a conference for which none of these individuals will get paid. Yeah. But to have that level of passion for that many individuals to get ready for nearly a year ahead and to have a leadership to get them all excited was freaking brilliant. Okay. And Again, I'm a little biased because I adopted myself to be a Houstonian that day and eventually life brought me to Houston. But I really feel that is one of the best conferences I've ever attended because, as my grandma always told me, what you sow is what you, what you read. So long background, but I really want to now break it down with you into very specific questions. One how did you get that many people excited a year before a conference that they have never, ever even done? Most of them never even attended a Pan-IT conference. Yeah. No, Arjun, uh, first of all, I will, uh, I will uh, uh, know our listeners understand that Arjun Sen was the vice president of Pan-IT US at that time in Denver, and he was the strength because what happens in the pan-IT world, 
uh, we have 21 chapters in the country and every chapter wants to hold a conference. And when Houston decided for that, we have never done a conference before. And with the support of Arjun, sitting on the board of Pan-ID USA, we were awarded the conference. Okay, guys, you run the conference. So thank you, Arjun, for that. That's one thing. Second is living in Denver, you made multiple trips to Houston on your dime. You, 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 you spent your money to come to us, help us, guide us, support us, and tell us what I can do for you. That was second thing. These small, small things makes a big difference. Organizing the Pan IT 2013 Houston conference was a challenging but rewarding experience. So I'm particularly proud of the fact that the conference was able to attract again 1,700 attendees from over 20 countries. Great success because of the hard work and dedication of the so-called cool team. They were all. They, they, they were the heart and soul of the conference, went above and beyond to ensure everything ran smoothly. And I'll, I'll tell you, building a successful team is a complex task. That involves a lot of, I should say, leadership skills, strategies. And I was fortunate enough to put into that position to build this team on my own. And the example I gave was if Arjun Sen is flying in from Denver to Houston to spend three days with us, why can't we all come at one place, at least from Houston, to make this happen? And exactly what you said, the University of Houston, that was the first officially, uh, it was a, a announced conference, officially announced, and we had close to 80 to 90 people there. Yes, I remember but which, I think you are deflecting on the answer, and I'm going to give the answer. Okay. You're being too polite and kind to yourself. I wanted to find out about who this Vicky Pindra guy is who pulled this team together. And what quite a few members of the Houston chapter told me is Vicky and his truck. I'm like, what truck? What they told me was when somebody new comes to town, Witty Bindra is the guy, when he hears about that person coming in, Witty is always there with his truck, whether it is picking me up at the airport and building relationships. Okay. To me, you cannot start a conference and say, let's all get together and relationship builds. No, you have to have a relationship without a purpose. And I really feel this, Witty, I will connect this to another example in my life. When I joined Papa John's, the CEO, when I went for the final interview, he came to the airport to pick me up. And then he dropped me on the way. And as we sat in the parking lot at the phone lot there, we had a conversation about the interview. And I really see there's a similarity between both these leaders. I wanted to work for Blaine Hurst because he invested in me the individual. Because if you look at it, in India, we have this concept of tan, man, dhan. Without the mm -hmm. tan and the man, there's no dhan. Okay. Yeah. So you, and that's the part where I really think you're being too polite, you're deflecting, giving me credit. <laughs> I really want to bring to everybody that modest side of Vithi Bindra, which I really, really like, is the individual investment he made in every individual was very important. Because people yeah. were ready to follow Viti Bindra when he called because they were in his truck. So anybody listening to this and you want to plan a great conference, buy a truck, invest in three, four years, take care <laughs> of every person. I'm not going to make light of this, but Viti truly appreciate you teaching them that lesson that relationship starts when people need them, not when you need them. So, so let's now go back into that 80 people coming together. How did you get them so detailed, owning it from day one, a year before the conference? What was the secret there? You and Pratish, of course, have to mention Pratish Kanani, yeah. human being. Pratish Kanani. Yeah, he was my, my right hand at in the con. So, Arjun, on a serious note now, let's, let's go back. This trust and respect you have to build with time. Mm -hmm. I, I firmly believe if you don't deposit any cash in the bank, you can't withdraw. Great point. 
So to build this trust and respect, 18 months before the conference, I told my wife, look, I'm running my own business, but I've told my partner, I'll be spending 50% of my time to building a team for this conference. And at first time today in the last 10 years, it has been 10 years, the conference happened exactly the same time 10 years ago. It was on 5th, 6th, of 7th of December. Today is 9th of December. First time I'm disclosing, I lost business because of this conference. I was not going for my work meeting because my conference was more important for me because you can keep on working for your life. But this chance you only get once in a lifetime where all the 60,000 IITs are looking at you, all the senior guys all over the countries are expecting you to deliver a, a fabulous conference. So I was dedicated. Mm-hmm. I built trust within the team. How I built trust was I used to take individual for lunch four times a week, each and every individual. I did more than 200 lunches using my own personal credit card, using my own money. Try to understand what is their strength. You cannot put a square peg in a round hole. It took me six months to understand the strength of each and every individual in Houston area. It took me six months to understand who are the people who will commit to this thing till the end. People join in a excitement, but it's a 12 months. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Who will stay with me to the end? So that uh, I, I give credit to myself. I have that. I had a clear vision and goal. Mm-hmm. I had a, 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 a clear, I wanted to create a positive culture. I wanted to create a positive team culture, encourage collaboration and and, and creatively and continuous improvement when we're looking at long-term success. It was just like running a business. I was building a team of my senior VPs and VPs and tried to show them one goal using my own uh, time, resources. And when they saw me what I'm doing, they saw me, man, he is into it. I said, look, if you can't be with me, let me know today. Don't give me this thing after three months. And you'll be surprised. I have to let people say no. I have to let people go also because if there was one position of operations, one for marketing, one for program, there were four people wanted to run that whole show. I have to tell, hey, hold on, man. I can't have four people running program. I only have one or two chair and co-chair. So I have to, I was in a that position where I was able to make selection that I want this guy, I don't want that guy. This all happened in six months, creating clear vision and goal in the mind of everybody. That this is the purpose of the pan IIT. This goals we have to achieve. What is the vision of pan IIT? What we are trying to do? So that all work went before you met the team in the University of Houston. So I'm taking a few things from here. Number one, priority to me, what I'm learning, talking to you, Vicky, when you choose one, you have to put others as second or third priority. In this case, when you chose priority to be pan your business took second priority. And for that, there are consequences. The moment of you course. took time there, and it was, you were not stupid. You made a choice and a conscious choice. I'm really, truly grateful to you for that. And that's the reason the choice happened. The second also is, you talk about this to be a business with a little bit of a fine print. You're not paying anybody. Yep. You have to plan, but still you're running it like a business, knowing that you need the people there for the long haul. And that is huge. So the follow-up yep. question I have is, especially in nonprofits, where a lot of people get in and egos come in, How did you keep the egos under control? Because I'm now going forward to another visual. When the conference happened exactly 10 years back, all the leaders were on stage with different events. And there was no backbiting. There has to be tension and stress. It's very normal. But I'm talking about the team was very coherently together. So what was the secret of keeping this team of unpaid, highly functional volunteers. A lot of these are presidents and vice presidents in their own life, come together and work. What was, How did you get them all to be one team and not fight and kill each other? 
Yeah, again, a good question, uh, Arjun. Let me answer it uh, in a very candid manner. Again, today, uh, again, for the first time in 10 years, somebody asked me this question. I am happy to share my my viewpoint, my thought process behind the whole, uh, how, how the whole thing happened. First of all, uh, I told the team that if every, anything wrong happens, if any mistake happens, I am responsible for that. You can put my name, Vitti told us. Mm -hmm. If anything good happens, you take the credit. It's very easy to say. But I lived with that statement for 18 months. Brilliant. And people had trust in me. If he commits to something, he will go out of the way to help us. And I was standing behind each and every leader. I don't want to name people. Some people dropped the ball. And it took us three weeks to bring it back on track. And I said, look, hey, the good thing is you come to me, tell me you have screwed up. I will make it right. And it happened. And that's the reason, the passion for the cause, the desire to make the impact and giving back to the IIT community was ingrained in the DNA of all the volunteers which worked with me. So the senior guys from different uh, uh, oil and gas industry, energy industry, they were more, much more senior than me. But they were listening to me. I said, look, here I am your leader. And you have given me that opportunity to be the leader. And I'm passionate. I'm committed for this cause, for the issue. So I want to tell you what I want from you. And honestly, Arjun, I'm thankful to the team. I'm thankful to the Almighty God. I'm thankful to my family. Everybody listened to me. And if I told them, hey, to me, and do what I'm telling you, I know what I'm doing. They followed my directions. And I, I respect that. And again, that all happened was I have given a lot of things to them initially. For two months, I was struggling to make them understand how I'm positioning the whole conference to the whole world. Mm -hmm. It's not Viti Bindra's conference. It's a Pan-IIT 2013 Houston conference. Everybody will be, we will celebrate along with everybody. It's not my success, it's your success. Not even once in the whole journey, I use the word I. I always use the word, it's our conference. Pratish Kanani, Vice President, you are the backbone. I, I, I'm really thankful to everyone. And that was the reason there were no conflict, there were no bad biking, because there was no reason to do that. And that's the part where what I'm again reflecting on is, and I'm trying to take it outside parity, to a bigger cause, bigger purpose is if you are not committed to the journey, you can't fake it. If you are not committed to the people, you cannot fake it. And as a leader, if you cannot let your team play freely, helping them see that success is theirs, but for failure, which happens, we are human beings, there's a trapeze which will push them and put them back. It does not work. And now on a lighter note, as all this was happening, the details of the conference was something even after 10 years, I haven't forgotten. There are two things, and I will not put in the order of importance, Number one was, I still remember, and it waters my mouth when I think of the quality of food that was served on time. Even the parathas. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> but the second thing was, every event started on time. Your speakers who are Nobel laureates to very high functioning leaders, and I think that's the part where it wasn't an alumni celebration. It was an alumni professional event because it was run so professionally. And I really want to, Vicky, again, I'm so glad because these have been all in my mind. And going back and reflecting and putting these out is very important because we as human beings are very bad at celebrating success. We are really good at saying, Vicky, why did this not happen? Arjun, why did this not happen? So I really feel this was a good conversation for all times to go in and celebrate everybody in Houston, but also celebrate Viti Bindra, Pratish Kanani and the chair as we go forward.
So, Viti, as you look yeah. at it, uh, go ahead, please. You were saying something. No, 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 no. Sorry, please complete. So, Viti, any regrets? Is there anything you could have done differently in the conference or anywhere else? You know, I look back 10 years ago, this thing happened. Most of the things went well. Mm -hmm. The only regret I feel today is that some of the action items which came out of a conference, we worked on those items for the first one or two years, three years. And because this is a non-profit work, because this is not a full-time work for any one of us, we were not able to sustain those action, those journeys, which we decided to do. I'll give you an example in the education field in Houston area, uh, trying to set up some initiatives, trying to set up something. So that, and, and, and I got full support from the mayor of Houston that time. And, and going back, I was thinking maybe we should have involved some third party peer agencies to take this message forward, to take this initiative forward, and we can help them as a consultant. But what we did was we took everything in our hand. We will do it. And you know one thing, Arjun, when the conference happens, it was a great success. We were all, uh, it was a proud moment for everybody. And after that, people was tired. Mm -hmm. They went into their cocoon. They went into their, in their silos and they were all resting. So we lost some time, one, one and a half years after that, to, 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 to take some action and keep on doing those good things. We should have engaged some professional bodies after the conference to make those things happen, which we didn't do that. But I know uh, this is my thought. I, I might be wrong. No, no, it's a good point. I think that also happens in most professional organizations is, especially volunteer leaders, when they come in, everybody wants to leave their own mark and do things the same way. You know, after that, I was president and you were president after that. Sometimes it's easier to try to build a new website than to see what can I do to make the website be used every day. It doesn't have to be cool and sexy. It is all about the value. And there are two things I've learned in this journey. One was from Arjun Malhotra when I first got involved at Pan IT. He told me for any nonprofit, it starts with governance. Without governance, you cannot lock in what you don't do and what you do. And what I learned after I left and, you know, after your term and everything else was succession planning is very important. Yes. Succession planning is not the person right after you. Succession planning is a six to eight years, not just people, but the education thread that you're talking about. If it is important, it takes 10 years for that education thread to continue. And the succession plan, putting the process, the external company consultants that you're talking about is very important in that journey. Yeah. So, Viti, now I want to take a forward-thinking direction to ask, so where is Viti going next? <laughs> uh, yeah, good question. Now, um, at this stage of life, uh, with the grace of God, uh, I'm very thankful where I am today and how I started my journey from India. I'm, uh, I can't even think of how, how much we have achieved. Uh, success we have achieved in the professional life, personal life, everything is fine. So now at this stage of life, what next? My, my inner desire is that I should have the ability to positively impact uh, the lives of other, you know, broader, really globally. I'm still under development. Mm -hmm. But I will be, or I'll be very excited. It shows my capabilities, what I have developed in the last 25 years. Give back to the society. To give back to the ideas. Positively impact the, the, the current students, alumni, and the community as a whole. So I'm waiting for the day to come where I can say, okay, I can do full time. Uh, full-time non-profit work and still I can sustain myself, I can sustain my family, still take care of my expenses. 
but I'm really wanting a data where I can uh, I can be positive back to my hope others. The because, the because the reason I say it will happen is because I don't think you can, even if you try, get away from your formula of investing in people, believing and putting your heart in, and then your time, and then will people will follow. So I see that you do have a blueprint for success, which is in your DNA. And it must have come from your parents. I was fortunate to meet them. And, you know, yep. so I feel that is the DNA that we have, which gets replicated. Yep. Finishing on a lighter note, you know, in this journey, I got to meet Vitti. He became a friend. He was turning out to be a brother, but then I paused because I found <laughs> somebody cooler in the family who I chose to become my sister. Vitti's wife, Lumina, became my sister amazing kids and I always pull with his leg a lot because but at the same time the closeness comes when you appreciate a human being and as you start going through so Viti, let's say today on a lighter note you finish this call and you get an e-bike and the e-bike said that you have to plan with all your fan IT experience and event but this event has only three people 18 year old Viti Vendra Viti today and 100 year old Viti Vendra so with all your experience, where will this event happen? And what is one thing the 18-year-old will say, witty today, and 100-year-old witty will say? One thing, each one will say. So where will the event happen? <laughs> uh, that's an excellent question, man. I, I You know, I, I have not even thought in my dreams that that scenario can come in my life. Uh, again, 18 and the three generations in one room. Uh, uh, excellent. So let me uh, let me go back. So uh, as you know, um, um, I have lived in five different countries, right? Uh, before I came to the US, and I worked in those countries. I like every country, but I have got some very close relationship with New Zealand. I'll tell you why. That country gave me a gave me opportunity to excel. That country gave me an opportunity to do something. For the nation there, and I know I, I, I shared this with you earlier. I was the first Durban Sikh to be accepted as a commissioned officer in the Royal New Zealand Naval Volunteer Reserve. Wow. So I'm proud of that. That the country trusted me wearing a turban and going on the New Zealand Naval Frigate and going in the ocean. So that was the thing. So if that event has to happen, if you ask me, that event should happen in New Zealand. Okay. That's one. Well, what will each one of them say? One thing. So 18 year old Vitti will say, Dad, I know everything what I am doing. <laughs> you don't try to teach me what the life is. I know. Mm -hmm. and, and as so, so when they are 18, they know everything. They don't want any guidance. They don't want any. They know everything thanks to social media and thanks to what's available online. They have answer to each and every question. So they don't need a 50 year old witty or 100 year old witty. So that's 18 year old. It's like, Dad, I know everything. I will succeed. I know how, how to play this role in my life. That's one thing. 100 year old witty will say, again, I'm just contemplating. Will say, sons, be spiritual in life. So, so spirituality will take you to, I don't say religious, spiritual. Trust in God. Trust in Almighty. And make sure whatever you're doing in life, somebody's watching. So I can, I, I can see how old people will say, at the end of the day, what happens in your life? The spirituality has a role in life. And don't forget that which the young generation don't forget. That the hundred year old witty will say. And the current witty, he will enjoy listening to both these witties, 18 year old and 100 year old. And he will say, But I have done my best. I, I, I'm being spiritual. I'm trying to do my things in a proper way. So I'm happy where I am. 
and I don't have any regrets in life. I'm thankful to God. The only thing is if I can sustain my this lifestyle till I die, I'll be the most luckiest person on this earth. Brilliant. I hope, hope I gave you the answer. Very good. And again, you know, I really feel the answer was somewhat predictable because I know your sons and I think they're right when both of them feel they know more than what dad does. And the little I got a chance and I was blessed to get a chance to know your dad. Amazing, kind heart and a presence, a very, as you said, spiritual presence. But the smile and the presence, I think, defines him. So it's not the words that he said, but I really think that this story really connects him. So we really appreciate the time and thank you for sharing. And I'm sure everybody who listens and sees this will enjoy. Thank you all. Thank you, Jim, once again. Thank you. You've been listening to Secrets to Win Big with Arjun Sen, founder and CEO of Zen Mango, top brand growth driver and a former Fortune 500 executive who has been called one of the most marketing intelligent minds in the business. To learn more, visit www.zenmango.com. Share this podcast with your friends and subscribe wherever you like to listen to podcasts. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.